Controversial swimmer Leah Thomas became the first known transgender athlete to win an NCAA Division I title, is challenging world aquatics in court, hoping to allow biological men to compete in the women's league. Thomas doing this reportedly in hopes of competing in the Paris Olympic trials. Thomas has not competed since 2022 when world aquatics introduced rules that prohibit anyone who has undergone, quote, any part of male puberty from the female category. Now, before this, biological men were able to compete in the women's league if they lowered their testosterone levels. World Aquatics says that its policy, which was adopted in June of 2022, was, quote, rigorously developed on the basis of advice from leading medical and legal experts. And in careful consultation with athletes, World Aquatics remains confident that its gender inclusion policy represents a fair approach and remains absolutely determined to protect women's sports, end quote. Now, no hearing date has been set, which makes it unlikely that Court of Arbitration for Sports will rule on the matter before the U.S. Olympic trials in June and the 2024 Paris Olympics, which start in late July. Now, sitting here with me is Paula Scanlon. She is a former UPenn swimmer and a Leah Thomas teammate. Thanks for coming in, uh, for sharing your story. We appreciate you being here. I know it's probably tough to talk about, especially since uh, you've dealt with this firsthand, but I want to know what you make of this lawsuit. Yeah, I think the lawsuit is incredibly unfair. I think FINA made the ruling, and it's a it's offensive to them. They made the decision. They revisited the science. They made the conclusion that men shouldn't compete in women's sports. And to file any type of claim against that is against the governing body that they had claimed previously had done the right thing. So it's very interesting that they only like the rules when it applies to them. Uh, the Court of Arbitration for Sports saying in a news release, quote, Miss Thomas accepts that fair competition is a legitimate sporting objective and that some regulation of the transgender women in swimming is appropriate. However, uh, Thomas submits that the challenge provisions are invalid and unlawful as they discriminate against her, contrary to the Olympic Charter, the World Aquatics Constitution and Swiss law, including European Convention on Human Rights and the Convention of the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. Uh, your thoughts on this, because Leah Thomas didn't grow up a woman, um, can't be discriminated against as a, a woman because she wasn't born as one. Um, what does this send the message to uh, born biological women? It's incredibly offensive to me. And I think that that statement reads to me, OK, we're OK with one year of testosterone suppressant. But anything, right, they, they don't want them fully banned. They just say one year is enough and we're going to be good enough. And I think the entire season was evident that men shouldn't compete in women's sports. And it was a, it's just as a, as a woman who's worked so hard my entire life to compete, it's just so rude to us to think that men can compete in our sports and anyone can be a woman if they just suppress their hormones for a year, which is what they agreed to, right? They said some regulation, I think, which means the one year of hormones, which was the previous ruling. And not only do uh, you as a, a born a female swimmer have to have potentially titles stolen from you, you also had to deal with just the discomfort of sharing a locker room uh, with someone who was not born your gender. You've been outspoken about this, saying that it made you and your former teammates very uncomfortable. If they do reverse this policy, what sort of a message does that send to women who are being so honest and open about their feelings and, and what it must feel like to, to just change in a locker room with someone who was born a biological male. What message does that send to them? Well, it tells us all that our feelings don't matter, but it also, what's the point of having women's sports if we're gonna allow anyone to compete in them? I think we're seeing now in other sports, there's leagues, there was just this league that had five people that were men on a women's team. What is the point of women's sports if we're going to allow men to join them? We might as well cut the program and make every single sports co-ed because there's no point if we're going to allow these policies. So we either stand by having women's sports for women only or we don't. And I think that we should stand for having women's sports for women only. For you, having been someone who was on uh, Leah's team, should she be allowed to compete in the Olympics or even go to the qualifiers? How would that make you feel? I think that it would make me really upset um, I don't think, I think if Thomas wanted to try and do that with the men, I'm, I welcome that. Um, but ultimately, if you were not born female, you should not be a female Olympian. You should not be competing on the NCAA level. You shouldn't be competing at the high school level. Sports categories are sex-based and they exist for a reason. And if we can't protect that, then what's the point of having the category? All right. Paula Scanlon, thanks for coming in. Thanks for talking about this. Uh